So the best and easiest way, most efficient way to really put away some firewood really quick is to look for dead standing timber that's up off the ground. It's not down covered with snow. It's the easiest thing to get to. It takes a little bit of ax work, a little bit of saw work, uh, but that's the best way to get dry firewood, especially dead standing. It's probably already going to be seasoned. So I picked out this dead standing fir, I believe it is. Uh, all the needles are gone, but the branch pattern makes me think it's a fir. Uh, and, you know, I don't mind burning the conifers, but as far as like really getting the BTUs, uh, the best bang for your buck is really birch. Um, and then followed by the hardwoods and kind of the, the fruit woods. But there's nothing wrong with, you know, harvesting some of this timber that's, that's a dead standing conifer. It's gonna burn really quick. Uh, so it, it has its place. So when I'm selecting this, I kind of need to look at a few different things. And the first thing is I need to look at where this thing is going to fall when I take it down. So if you're doing this close to your shelter, then you need to kind of know where that's going to hit to make sure that if it falls or if it falls wrong, it's not going to take out your shelter. So what I like to do is I always have a compass in my pocket anyway. Uh, and the compass that I like to use is the Sunto MC2, and it's got a clinometer on it. And I use that clinometer to determine where this tree is gonna fall if everything goes right. So with the clinometer, what you've gotta do is you've basically gotta index either west or east to the top index line. And when that's flat, when you hold this top edge now flat, then that black arrow is gonna settle right on the zero. That tells me that's a zero degree angle that I'm holding at it now. And then what I'm gonna do is back up as I'm going, kind of figure out about where that's gonna go. And then I'm gonna sight along the top edge of this to the top of the tree. As I'm sighting along the top of that, I'll look at the clinometer and it'll tell me what that angle is. And I'm just gonna keep backing up until that clinometer tells me I'm at a 45 degree angle when I sight along the top edge to the top of the tree. That is about 40. And that is about a 45 right here. So what that tells me is, since the, this is a 45 degree angle from where I'm standing to the top of the tree, that tells me, just like a square, this is the right angle. The distance from where I'm standing to the base of the tree is the same distance as the base of the tree to the height of the tree. And that's where that 45 degree angle comes in. So that gives me a pretty good estimate of where the top of this tree is gonna land. And I want it to kind of land right in here where it's nice and clear. So once I know kind of where I'm gonna put the tree down, then I've got to do some work closer up by the tree. So a couple things to think about when you get up close to the tree. I already know where I'm trying to put this tree. I wanna look around and see if there's anything that it's gonna get hung up on. And if there is, I'll take those out ahead of time. It's got a couple of small maples here, but if I have any luck, I'll put it down right between those. Uh, I went ahead and cleared off all the lower branches that might be in my way. Uh, and really this is a you know, Woodcraft pack ax. This is a 24 inch handle, so I can use this standing up, but when I'm felling trees, I typically like to fell from a kneeling position because it gives me a lower stump uh, and gives me more firewood that comes off with that. So, Basic ax safety though, if you are using a handle that's like a 19 inch or, or less, then you definitely always want to make sure you're using it while you're in a kneeling position. It's not a, a stand up kind of ax, unless you've got you know, back stops and all that when we're talking about splitting. But as far as felling, you know, it's usually the best bet to go ahead and take a knee to do your felling cuts, all right? So with that, I'm basically gonna be doing the majority, I'm doing my front cut basically right here. So I need to look at anything that's gonna be in the way. And 
I also need to look up and kind of take a look at what my ax could get hung up on as I'm swinging because you can bring a branch down on your head, you can catch on that, and it can make your ax go where you don't want it to go because this is a heavy, sharp head on the end of a long stick and it gets momentum and weight and it's really one of the most dangerous things you can use in the woods. So you wanna make sure you clear overhead, no branch is gonna be in your way. You know, it's a lot of prep work to bring a tree down. Uh, so I've done that, cleared everything overhead. The next thing I wanna look at when I'm gonna fell this is kind of which way the tree is leaning. This particular one is leaning slightly back that way. Uh, so it's gonna be a trick to kind of convince it to go the way I want it to go. You can use paracord, you can use some kind of cordage to kind of pull tension on that direction so that as you're putting in your front cut, it kind of starts leaning that way. But and I think we'll be all right with this one. Up at the very top, there's some smaller branches from these maples that are behind me that it may get hung up on. So there's a chance that it's not gonna fall exactly how I want it to go. With that said though, whenever you're felling a tree, you always look and see what your escape routes are, all right? Another thing to do is check to see, you know, kind of how solid it is. Look up to see if there's a, a, a large section up top that's dead or broken so that when you start hitting on it down here and it breaks loose up there and it can come down and fall on you. One of the things I like about the conifers is they kind of have this shield of branches that would deflect anything like that from coming down and hit me on top of the head. But for the most part, this is pretty solid up here. But that's something you wanna check if you're bringing down a hardwood, especially. So I've got everything cleared out of my way. Nothing's gonna hang up my ax as I'm using it. I've got clear escape paths, nothing's in the way. I mean, obviously this is not the way I'm gonna go. If something goes wrong, I'm gonna either go up that way or I'm gonna probably head straight up that way. So. If I'm using just an ax, I'm gonna be using a front cut and then following that with a back cut. So with my front cut, what I'm doing is the direction that I want that tree to fall, it's gonna go down there. I need to basically create a V shape, basically a large V notch in there to give it some relief so that as it falls, it can fall and close that way. I'm removing material, getting it out of the way so it can close. So that needs to be in line with where I actually want this tree to fall. So I would cut that V-notch on the front. Then I would go around to the other side and do what's called a back cut. And the back cut, if my V-notch is down here, my back cut is always gonna be higher than the front cut. And then what that does is it leaves what's called a hinge in there. And that hinge is what kind of holds that tree. And as it closes, it kind of holds that thing and keeps it from coming completely up and flipping. Uh, so you always want to leave a hinge. In this case, we're going to be using a saw for the back cut, which is one the way I like to do it. So I'm going to put a V-notched front cut in here. I'm going to open up that, remove material to where it allows it to fall that way. And then I'll back cut the backside with a saw and then my escape route will be right up towards that way. So when you're actually felling, depending on the diameter of the tree, that you're gonna be felling, you're gonna cut kind of in a pattern. So I like to, I like to hit this, this is a, a wide enough tree. You wanna think of it as hitting it far, hitting it near, and then hitting it in the middle. And that's for my downward angle on top. And you kind of change the angle to where you're hitting it far, near, and middle, going in an upwards direction. And you keep doing that until you've opened up that B notch, how you want it to go. So, I'm gonna move that out of the way, kind of look at where I want this to go. And this is where I want to start making my cuts. And you wanna kind of 45 down and kind of a 45 up as best you can. Take a look. my v-notch about halfway through go ahead and put the axe away and get it out of the way all together
So now is where it's really important to have your escape route because I've opened this up so that it can drop that way, right where I want it. And then I'm gonna start back cutting here until I get probably up to here and then I'll have a hinge. Now here you can see, I've got my cut that comes all the way up. I've got a little less than a one inch hinge right now that's gonna hold it. So that's really as far as I wanna take it with the saw. And from here, I should be able to just give it a little nudge the direction I want it to go and then run up my escape route. So once you've got it felled, the next thing to do is to limb it and top it. And by limbing it, I just mean taking the limbs off and topping it, you get down to a point on the top of the tree where it's just really small. Uh, so you, you normally just take that off because that's not really big enough to really worry about throwing in the fire, uh, but it does make good kindling. So you can limb with the saw or you can limb with an ax or a hatchet. Uh, it's up to you, whatever your preference is. But the key concept, like sawing, I think is pretty self-explanatory. But the key concept when you're doing it with an ax, two key concepts, I should say, is if you hit it from the top side, then a lot of times the tree it's growing like that, you hit it on the top and it just kind of splinters and kind of pulls away. If you hit it on the bottom side, it cuts a lot more cleanly. And the second key concept is to look at what your backstop is, right? Because you're still using an ax. And if I'm following through here, then it's probably gonna to continue to go out that way and I'm gonna be all right. So my backstop's clear, I'm hitting from bottom to top. And you just take those limbs right off and get them out of your way. And when you start going downward, you need to start looking at where does that backstop go and make sure it's not gonna miss and hit you. You get a few of those. And then when it comes to stuff that's on the side, I like to step over it. And I'm still going from bottom to top, but now I've kind of using this as a barrier when I'm actually limiting it so that my back block, my backstop is behind me and not my body. I don't want to hit into this to where that could skip off, hit me in the thigh. That's just not a good thing. Let's kind of keep going down that way. Same thing for the other side. It's just a series of paying attention to where your backstop is and just getting the right angle on the tree so that you can limit. It's getting pretty pretty scrawny up top here. So I'm just gonna to top it right there. And that's pretty good. Nothing left to do but gather up all this kindling to get down to camp and then drag this back to camp. And that's a quick way to transport some lumber for your fire.